ay, 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 ay. Hey guys, let's not pretend here. You know who it is, okay? Uh, so today I'm here with Michael Mueller. I know, right? Don't don't get me worked up, okay? Because you know, remember, the hands don't sweat anymore. The doctor said I'm way better at that. So, <sighs> but you know, I'm not really controlling the consistent mind thoughts that I'm having here. Like I'm mentally like psyching myself out here. <sighs> what do you guys think? I should go back to the doctor. <laughs> That's great and all. Anywho, Michael Mueller's here. I just want to make this like the most comfortable place you could ever be at this moment, right now. He has such a huge, huge announcement, something that means so much to him, and I don't want to screw it up. I just want him to just feel right at home. Do you guys feel at home when you're here? When my when my hands aren't sweating, you know what? This is not going to be a thing about my hands sweating. Mike, please don't listen to anyone about the sweaty palms. You know. It's normal, right? When you are about to speak to someone that just <laughs> you find just so cool and amazing, and all you want to do is just show them that you don't have sweaty palms. Huh? Anywho, everybody, just remember when Michael shows up, just play it cool, okay? Like me right now. Jeez. Oh, oh, he's he's here. Michael Mueller, oh wow, great, 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 Michael, Michael Mueller, welcome to the show, and uh, thanks for joining us, let's go. Welcome to my show again, (laughs) Freddie J's A Voice to Be Reckoned With, season three. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Today, let's give a warm a very warm welcome to creative director Michael Mueller. Yes, he is here and he has so much to share. His uh, premiere trailer and I'm I'm not even going to I'm going to let Michael come on here and blast us away what he has and he's such a treat. He's such an awesome guy and uh I ha- it's an honor to have him on the show. A voice to be reckoned with because Michael has a voice and with some great things to share, you know, uh, just let's please, please give him a warm welcoming and guys, let's show him what we do and how we do here at Brandy J's A Voice to be Reckoned With. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to my show with Brandy J, a voice to be reckoned with. We are in for a treat today. I have here with me Michael Mueller, creative director. Michael, are you here? I am here. I'm excited and, uh, you know, I'm full of energy right now. Yes, I love it. I am too. (laughs) How are you, Michael? I'm doing great. Um, I'm doing great. Like uh, we were mentioning off the air, uh, this is the First, this is the kickoff uh, interview for our promotional campaign for the my first. It's actually my first feature film, um, the E Wisters, which is a it's a it's a comedy and it's 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 hilarious. That's all I can say. I'm like really excited. I'm like we have the trailer that world premiere on Monday, and I'm just like fighting at the chops to let it out, and I can't do it till Monday. So it's. Uh, <laughs> It, it, you know, you got to build the hype. You got to, you can't just put it out there. So there's, so I'm, yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. For sure, for sure. That's great. Um, wow. I I see um, that. I saw some stuff that I thought was so so sweet, so great <laughs> that you do online. And um, and you're a family man, first of all. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One one hundred percent. Um, my th- I have three sons and a wife. And, you know, for me, it, it's really like, I, I would love to build a legacy of something that could be passed on to them. Um, what, you know, in the, in the form of a, 
a creative my creative studio or just them following in my footsteps you know so it, it's at the end of the day it's it's really you know it's my passion but it, it's to build the legacy at the same time that's so awesome that's so awesome um i i got honors of seeing uh you um proposing uh, I think with the proposal and then announcing your the birth of your child I, I had no idea and then I saw it and I was like oh my goodness he is <laughs> yeah so it, uh, really my break in just video production really came back in like 2010 and I had somebody hire me to to do like a surprise wedding proposal in the form of a movie trailer in which uh she um watched before fast five in the theater back in 2010 and from that uh matt still was the the guy who hired me we just formed a really uh tight creative friendship and we we kind of just started getting into these creative announcements and we like to call them epic uh proposals or whatever and so we actually um did one uh, for uh, his when he, when he got when him and his wife got pregnant, and then uh, we did one for when me and my wife had our first, and then him and my wife teamed up and surprised me when we were pre- when when my wife was pregnant with our youngest one. So it's kind of like I live in this world where I never know if someone's being for real or if I'm being led into uh, getting blindsided by something. So. <laughs> it's uh it's interesting but i mean it's it's like the the coolest thing about it is like my one-year-old he'll be two in march um when he sees that you know he'll be able to be 15 and go back and see that and that's why i love so much about just the technology age that we live in is that literally we're leaving a a history trail for our kids you know yes for sure for sure that's awesome did you always want, was it something that you always wanted to, to do? As far as uh, like video or just doing the, the like the, the surprise announcements? Um, video, yeah, video, just working at, in, in, in um, directing well, and working in the field. Well, um, I, I would say I've always been a huge like movie lover growing up and even in my 20s and I just never thought it was something possible. So I think it's always been like something buried in uh, deep down inside of me. But then like, I think it was like 2009 is when um, the DSLR age came to life. And all of a sudden you could get some really great quality um, video um, for a fraction of the cost, you know, as opposed to shooting something on film or something like that. So um, and I have uh, my best friend Amir who lives in Phoenix. He was living in Georgia at the time, and you know he he had me gassed up to get this Canon camera. And you know he was he had me thinking I was going to be like Michael Bay overnight. I just need to go and buy this camera, which the camera was like nine hundred dollars. It wasn't like oh wow, <laughs> we weren't like in big Hollywood production type gear or anything. But then I bought it, and then all of a sudden here comes the learning curve like I was like dude I have no idea what I'm doing I just know what I'm creating doesn't look like anything I've seen in any movie before because it was horrible like you know you got to make a ton of stuff that sucks before you start making something that's good so um but but that just really that just really fueled it and then that same year is when the whole proposal um thing happened and it went super viral and then it was like out of nowhere we had like networks like licensing the footage from me so they could run it in segments and we had we had a ton of coverage like the couple Matt and Jenny they went on the Ellen show and she paid for the honeymoon and it was just like so that really just lit the 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 fire under me to like it just was like the sign that I needed to know I was moving in the right way like it was something I was built to do wow that's awesome man i want to be just like mike when i grow up guys <laughs> <laughs> no i always you got to aim higher you got to aim higher like just see what whatever i've done and just aim you got to aim higher than that it's just 
Like, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Like, last night, me and my wife, we were watching the new um, Kevin Hart special on Netflix, with, which was kind of like more of a behind-the-scenes documentary. Yeah, I've seen that. It's pretty awesome. I liked it. It is. It is. I think we got, for the, we got one more episode to go, but, you know, it, it was just looking at what he accomplished, like, within, you know, just the past five to ten years. Like, he just hit his 40s and I'm just like the massive success like it's super it's super inspirational but it's also like super intimidating you know what I mean like it's it's you know that level of success is you know it's just not common and it's not definitely not the, the the thing that I'm striving for but just to be able to make a living telling stories and having anybody want to watch them is 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 amazing enough for me but just to think about you know in in that lane those things are it's possible you know yeah so that 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 definitely is like uh it it's uh it's definitely inspirational but again like i said it's also scary as crap yeah yeah for sure because kevin he's like (laughs) but i liked i liked it because it showed his side of uh, him being, you know, to be identified, uh, he's a real person, obviously, but, you know, kind of let us see him in a different, different light. So oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And I really, you know, I, I always tend to, anytime the media starts to drag uh, any celebrity or anybody through the the mud, it's just, it, I think it just, for me, it really aggravates me because nobody has a clue what it's like to live under a magnifying glass and have Um, every uh, have every single thing you do be judged like what you wore walking to take out the trash or I know oh oh my god (laughs) I mean could you think about like you know you go you go to your job now people get on your nerves but then you don't have to deal with them because you go home and you don't see them but like these people are just waiting and they're watching and they're judging yeah, everything. Like, I don't even back. think, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think the the average person like myself or anyone else can really even understand what that must be like from uh, a mental standpoint and then the stress it causes, you know? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I think so to, to, to drag people through the mud without knowing what that would be like yourself I think it's just like I think I think it's kind of shitty you know yeah it it really really is and then all people see is like the glitz and the glam of everything they don't see that dude people like in your business 24 you can't even scratch your ass you know what I mean without somebody (laughs) you know the little things you don't want anybody to see (laughs) yeah yeah it's crazy and you know it, it, it and just the strain it causes uh, on your personal relationships and your family yeah. life. Like there's just, you know, so I, I, I'm not always so quick to, you know, and I know they had that big segment about his tweets from like 2009 and it was just oh, yeah. like, I'm like, Back man, in- yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just like, it's crazy. Like the thing is, is like, how can we crucify people for stuff like that nobody's perfect like I'm sure everybody at some point has said something they're not proud of or they yeah. mean mean like a hundred percent you know what I mean so yeah I don't know it's he just, just happened to crazy. be in the public eye yeah and it's a guy put up on you know you know mm-hmm. in the public eye and it's just like we all have those moments where it's like we screw up or made a bad choice decision and you know yeah that. it's crazy yeah, yeah, I, I feel you on that one. There's always somebody in, in the in the lurks ready to tear somebody, just waiting to tear, tear somebody down, and that just sucks about you know the world today. So yeah, I yeah, it is, it is. Sure. I agree with that a thousand percent. Well, I do, I do appreciate you, and and I, I like. Um, we were talking earlier about um, the, the things you do. Uh, you said you're, you're really big on dreaming and people following their dreams, and you know, getting away from the, you know, the BS of the, the superficial, the everyday. You know, you know the whole money thing. Like I'm just yeah, over money. Yeah. I love money, but I don't love money. I just appreciate what it does. You know, what I mean, get me what I'm happy. You know, what I'm able to do 
with it, but there's no fulfillment there as far as, you know, inside. And you can feel yeah. it too. If you're really in touch with yourself there, you feel empty. Yeah, you know, I, I, I agree with that a thousand percent. It's, uh, I am a huge advocate for um, the dream chasers that are out there. Um, and I try anybody I speak to that wants to talk about it, I'll talk about it. And I, you know, I, I want to encourage people to find whatever it is their passion is in life and figure out a way to, to monetize it, to earn a living doing it. And there's been a lot of conversations I've had with people and they're just like, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, what that is. And I'm like, what if you essentially, it, what do you do that? you're not doing it for money it's like a hobby or just pure enjoyment and you love it more than anything else like if if you know what that is there's there's an angle out there to find a way to there, there's a market for it and now with the yeah. internet you can you can reach that that market it's just like there's a there's a guy has a youtube channel he's got i don't know how many million subscribers and his obsession is with ants and he has ant farms and oh God, that's so cool yeah yeah so like if you go to youtube and you go to ants canada that's the name of the channel and this guy has like there is a market in a a, a subculture <laughs> of people that just like ants and i believe it because i like to watch ants. it's so crazy you bring this up because i wanted an ant farm i'm very i did some research on them and i was like very interested on uh, how they operate. <laughs> yeah, so like he has a video out there where these, these like he has all different species of ants and then he has like one where I guess they're like some, like, kind of, I, I don't know, evil ants or something, but they like tear, they, they eat a cockroach on camera and then it's just like, it's insane. And the thing is, it's like he's getting sponsorship from companies that create ant farms. And That's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's freaking awesome. And and then there's another guy who does uh, the Marble Olympics. And he, did you say marbles? They, yeah, Marble Olympics. Oh, um, is that the marbles, like the ones you shoot with the um. Yes, those marbles. I just bought some the other day from back when I was little. We used to play with them. <laughs> no, you have to. Yeah, you, know, you have to. What, what you know? Sometime this weekend, you just have to go out and, and on YouTube and check marble olympics he has all these different competitions and he's got he's built stadiums with marbles as fans and then he's announced like he it's almost like i'm like i wonder if he really wanted to be like a sports announcer and didn't get his break because <laughs> it is so interesting the way he delivers uh his his uh his take on the marbles racing down the hill oh, so it, it's 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 insane but I gotta see this yeah you've got to and there's again millions of views and like people are eating it up and the thing is it's like I'm sure when he decided to do it he didn't know that there was just going to be this whole huge uh community of people that were going to be interested in it but yeah he did it and he did it he, he you could tell he spent a lot of time um not just with what his uh, his announcing piece but he uh put a lot of time in the effort like he it looks like official if marbles had olympics it it looks official like that's it's awesome. insane yeah i so, play also that's awesome <laughs> yeah so yeah you'll definitely enjoy it then and it's just so it's like it, it, it's just going to reinforce the fact that like whatever you want to be whatever uh, it is that you want to do in life like you can make it happen um i think the thing that people get most caught up in though is like they expect things to happen overnight or they want that yeah. instant gratification and that that's where i think in in my conversations with people is where it's always fallen short it's it's like people don't have you know they're like oh i've been even like even a year like my journey started uh when i figured out what it is i wanted to do started back in 2005 and here we are in 2020 and i think i'm only now getting to a place where uh i would say for only in the past five years have i been able to do it professionally like where it takes care of my household so 10 years to get to that point and another five to open a studio and 
do my first feature film. I mean, it's just the thing at the end of the day, like if it's something you love and you, you want to do, you're not even counting the time that it's taking because you're enjoying yeah, it. Because you enjoy it so much. Yeah. 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 Like I've just enjoyed the journey. Like, you know, obviously it's like you, you accomplish one thing and you set another goal and you go towards it. But to me, it's like the past 15 years have been a blur. It's not like, oh my gosh, when is this going to happen? Because again, if you find yourself sitting there saying that, then it's probably not your passion because people have asked me oh well mike at what point do you quit or give up like if you and i'm like it's it's not a quit thing like if if i couldn't afford like if i had to go and get you know a, another regular 9 to 5 job this is still what i would do in my free time like it's not a thing of reaching a plateau and then saying i made it like that's not it yeah you know it's it's what I love to do and I think that's where you know I think that's where sometimes people that want to get in that journey and want to get on that path they they kind of have some confusion sometimes as to what that really means because I mean there's a lot of things out there you know where you have your motivational speakers and and people that post the motivational memes and quotes and all that stuff and like that stuff's great but I mean like at the end of the day there shouldn't you shouldn't require motivation from anything else other than yourself wanting to get up and do something better with your life because at the end of the day yep. that's the only person that really nobody cares like i don't care what you do with your 24 hours like nobody cares what i do with mine like all I, the only person that's in control of that is me you know what i mean yep yep Hey, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Listen closely. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And then you can listen to me, Brandy Joy, with a voice to be reckoned with. So that's kind of like, you know, I try to instill that with my inner circle, with my family. It's just like, you know, I have a 17-year-old. He's graduating um, this year, and it's like, He's at that weird crossroads where no one really knows out of high school. Some people know what they want to do, but for the most part, most people are like, oh, you know, or, but you know, I, I'm not going to push him down a road that he's not sure about. Yeah, for sure. Kind of let him find so, himself and see, you know. Yeah. Well, and then we, we, this, uh, over the holidays, we had a, like a real heart to heart. And I said, look, man, I said, whatever it is that you have in the back of your head that you want to see or experiment or check out or now is the best like you have no responsibility in life like you can go out and take some L's and be okay you know what I mean like yeah because you try to go out and and do that at a you're gonna have to be more reserved if you wait till you're in your 30s or your 40s to to go out there because you know we all get caught up by adult responsibility like obviously I have to I'm still going to take risks at my age, but I just have to be smarter about it. Like, I can't just say, oh, yeah, I'm going to ride out here and and intern over here for this company that pays nothing at at, at 40 years old. Like, you know, I can't do that. But at his age, 17, going on 18, absolutely go and learn from somebody, get up under somebody that you're interested in their business. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's that's awesome that you have that talk with them. You know, so I don't know, I don't know how everybody, parents, you know, household is is ran or anything like that. And times mm-hmm. change, but you know, my son is twelve, and 
you know, there's no book that comes with it. And I still feel like a first time, like when you have your child for the first time, like a, when he was born, it's okay, now he's becoming a teenager. So I'm still like, now I'm learning still like, okay, I have to have this, this talk and, you know, and working out of school too and being around kids all the time, you think I'd just be like, but it's, it's just not that, it, it really doesn't work that way. So I'm just making yeah. sure that I'm checking in with them and, asking them and just you know like later on we're gonna go grab something to eat and go walk around and, and talk and you know yeah. and I wanna just cause this right now I at 12 I told them this is you starting your path you don't wait until you get out of high school like you, you're working yeah. at it now to be where you wanna be so and, and, and I think as, as parents we, we what we have to do is just be mindful of the landscape of, of life that's going on around them and around us it's like if, if back when I was 17 and, it, you know, and this was like 97, 98, 97, and if I would have went to my mom and said, uh, I want to I want to play video games professionally uh, as my career, like that would have been the most insane <laughs> thing. Like I would have got laughed out of the house. Right. But now if my seven, if that was something my son wanted, like that, that's a real conversation now because the landscape's changed of yeah. how money is earned in today's day and age. And it's just going like, I have a, like I said, I got a, the, my youngest one will be two in March. I don't, I can't even wrap my head around what technology will be like in 15 to 18 years when oh my it's time to have, yeah. When it's like, when it's time to have that conversation with him, because that is what you know technology is just changing the economy as a whole so it's 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 not just oh i gotta go to college get a degree and then go work for uh, a corporation somewhere like that's that model is dying because yeah. you have you have millennials in their their 20s like they have no loyal like like when I think of like my grandparents and my wife's grandparents, like they had a lot of loyalty to companies, but the younger generation doesn't have that. They're going to go where they get the most money and have to do the less work. And yeah. that's just, <laughs> that, and they're not going to be like, Oh, and they have no intention on spending five, 10 or 15 years at a company. They're looking for the better opportunity constantly. So with that changing, I think there's just, we're going to see some huge shifts uh with and i've seen a lot here in georgia there's a lot of advertisements for the the colleges and they're trying to capitalize on chasing your dreams and you know they they happen at our campus or whatever and i'm like come on on, man that's a that's a far stretch (laughs) oh man that's so funny (laughs) well yeah well at least i mean that you know you you are able to have those talk conversations with your son and and you're open to him being becoming who he meant to be and to like you said taking a couple of L's and you know what I mean because sometimes you yeah. gotta to know to, to know you know to build yourself to become who you're supposed to be and so that's awesome that you have that yeah I, th- I think it's just a necessity and I think you know at the end of the day n- nobody's walked through life undefeated everybody's exactly. taking L's I mm-hmm. think it's I think the the plan is to try and take as many of them as early on as you can so you're not yeah. taking so many <laughs> later on in life yeah you know, they, they, st- they tend to hurt a little bit more when you're older and, and it <laughs> yes, takes a while to get back up you know <laughs> yep yes they do oh man they sure do <laughs> yes and I always tell the kids you know work at a school I'm like they're so in a rush to grow up and I'm just like trust me you're not in a rush for anything you're not missing anything right now just go to school be the best Jew you can be treat everybody with respect and kindness and and you know just be a kid you know and and, you know they just want to be so adult like and it's like obviously that comes from somewhere you know and I just try to do my part to always just keep it keep them where they need to be and that's in the kids lane because it's okay to be a kid because some people have are trying to live their childhood when they're it's too late but that's because they didn't have it when they were young yeah like, yeah uh, yeah and I think too a lot of it too when you start really breaking it down it, it, it a lot of stuff is like you know if you have disrespectful kids or anything like I think oh, it, it, yeah. you know it, it's it's it, those things are learned behaviors I mean they're they're not they just are. like they're they're learned and like at the end of the day like 
you know, I know, especially back in the in the '90s, early 2000s, uh, video games and music and movies got blamed for the you know certain things kids were doing, like whether it was a school shooting or something crazy like that. And you know, at the end of the day, it, I'm like, it's the it's the parents. Yeah. At the end of the day, parent, you, if you if you're you, you can't pass uh you can't you can't pass the blame on anybody because you know what i know more about what my kids are into and what they are doing and these are conversations you got to have if they're, yeah. If they're yeah and you and you got to have that bond and relationship it's not just like when i was growing up my mom was always like oh because i'm the mom and i said so like even though she had no logic behind it and it wasn't like a conversation it was just like and I, the whole time growing up, I'm just like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> I want to communicate. I want to communicate with my kids because, like, she had no idea, like, what's going on in, in mine or my sibling's head. You know, it was just like, because yeah. I said so. And that was her her take on everything was because she yeah. said so. I came from that, too. And I, and, yeah. I, I, and I learned, at becoming a parent, I learned how that was something that I did not want to to, you know, pass on because it doesn't make sense, you know, because it's... You know, that's not how it works. We raise our kids to become like independent and how to speak up for, you know, and to, you know, it all depends on your delivery, you know what I mean? And, and how to, you know, you know, we just teach them these things. And then when we do, then we shut them down, you know, and it's like, wait, you know, no, I said so. And it's like, that's not, that's because then they're, they're not going to talk to you basically. And you're not going to know a lot of things. So you got to leave it open, you know what I mean? For them to feel comfortable to come to you and, tell you don't always have to like what they have to say but at least you have a child that's talking to you (laughs) You yeah yeah (laughs) yeah and and in their teenage years and you're you're on the cusp of it it's there's just this whole funk they go through and it's just like you almost like it's like they have just this funk and rebellion against parents like it doesn't matter what you do they're not gonna like you because you're (laughs) you're the authority (laughs) figure in their life and you know, and I think that's that's the thing is like drawing the line of knowing where, uh, you know, I, I can't, I don't want to be your friend. I'm your, I'm your parent, but I'm like, but I'm here for you at the same time. But like, yeah. there's, there's the see, my mom for her, she was always she she rather be our friend. She wanted to be uh, buddies, so it was so it was a little bit different as a teenager. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I don't know. But that, you know, it is what it is. You know. Yeah. Some some things work for others that it doesn't. I just think the bottom line is, as long as the child knows that who's it, who's the parent and they're respectful. You know what I mean? Because what I feel like when I see a, a very respectful child that is respectful towards adults and say yes, ma'am, and you know, you can just tell respect, and you know, you know, you know where that came from. That came from the home, and you kind of get a feeling of what type of parent or what kind of upbringing that child has. Because I'm a, I'm around a lot of kids that the things that they say to adults I, I sit back in in astonishment like I would have got my mouth I wouldn't even have a mouth today <laughs> exactly <laughs> like exactly thought to talk to an adult like that so yeah that it's that's crazy it is yeah. it is but you know at the end of the day you know you kind of got to just stay uh in your hula hoop because you only got control over the influence of who's around you you know what I mean so it's just like all I know is when when, when my boys are out in, in public or in private they're, they're going to be polite they're going to have manners and they're going to do the right thing we try to teach integrity you do the right thing even when no one else is looking no you know what I mean yeah. so sure. I think those are kind of just it doesn't even have to be complicated it's just simple simple obvious stuff you know what I mean yeah Yeah, a lot of things are that the the things that make life a lot easier are are very simple and we make people have a tendency to to make life like complicated it's like the simple stuff like respect common sense (laughs) yeah it's like it's it's too hard for some people it's like like, what's happening here is it in the middle I always make jokes I'm like you really need to leave that school milk alone okay I don't know what they're putting in there yeah yeah, drink the it's, milk <laughs> yeah it's it's you know we live in a big world a lot of people are in it so you know everyone is not gonna uh no not everyone's gonna get along and not everyone's gonna be on the same page but i guess at the same time that's the same thing that makes the world great is that we 
can have our own ideas and our own thoughts in our own lane, you know. Yeah, just got to respect them. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to definitely uh, uh, get to know you uh, more and ask you um, as far as you know, everything that you're doing and all. Have you ever? Is there anybody that and like that has inspired you? That is like you know someone uh, that is big. Um, like because you you know you do your directing and stuff. Have you ever had like a favorite director, or an actor, or, or you know someone that plays a part kind of in what you do today? Um, yeah, I think I think I think anybody in the creative field uh, is inspired from different artists. You know, I, I think it would be crazy if someone said they didn't or they weren't, because right. the way you we normally fall in love with that passion is seeing the work of somebody else that you really um, uh, really admire um, or really look up to. Uh, as far as their work goes and um, I definitely I definitely have a like a handful um, as far as directors go I'm a huge uh, David Fincher fan um, huge Tim Burton and Martin Scorsese fan and they're kind of a, a wide range of what the stories they tell but I feel like those three best encompass uh, where I come from or, or what um, I would aspire to be as a director. Um, and then also a lot of imagery is inspired from Annie Leibovitz. She's had, she's probably one of the most iconic photographers of all time. Like she has incredible, incredible work. And if, if you're not familiar with her, I would definitely um, just do a quick Google search. Like she has incredible work. She's, she's, photographed anybody within relevance in the past 50 years like insane wow. yeah what's like, her last name again it's uh Leibovitz it's L-I-E-B-O oh, gosh I know I always jack up her name Leibovitz I, I think Google will probably finish it off though if I can get the car <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's L-I uh L-E-I B-O uh -huh. uh V-I-T-Z okay and she yeah like i think so like she actually photographed john lennon from the beatles i want to say it was the day he was murdered or the yeah it was like the same day like he was murdered she had a photo like so essentially she was the last person to take pictures of of john lennon before he was murdered um but but since then i mean like she's done e every celebrity and political figure um work globally so it, it's just like uh she just has a very um unique uh design when it comes to her photography with a lot of con like deep dark contrast and bold colors and the, it's just very cinematic photography so th those are visually those are some of my uh, uh influences that uh pretty much uh, fell in love with where I fell in love with the art. Oh, and John Hughes too. Like John Hughes was huge for me growing up just because he, I, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin originally. And he's like, and he was born and raised like an hour south from where I grew up. And it was in Illinois. So like all of his movies, he filmed in his hometown. So when we would watch his movies, it looked like my, like it's only movies in the, the 80s and 90s that looked like my neighborhood in the Midwest because everything else was, you know, filmed in New York or California at those times. So I, it just kind of <clears throat> gave me a unique connection to the films because I related so much because the schools looked like the schools that I, we went to and the neighborhoods looked like my neighborhood when I walked outside type thing, so. Cool. Okay, that's awesome. Do you, um, so do you have any, like, because um, I know, I remember you said that you, you're not, you're bare, you know, you're just, you feel like you're just getting to the point where, you know, you, you're not there yet, but you're further along from where you, you were before. And, you know, uh, do you have a, like, a most, like, significant or memorable time in your journey 
that uh, stands out to you and that kind of makes you sit back and just smile, like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, to be honest, there, there's, there's a lot um, because things that I would have never dreamt were possible or even, you know, conceptualized as something that could happen. And, and then when they happen, it's just like, wow, it's almost like a, I've had a lot of surreal moments where it's just like, uh, for, for example, the, this E-Listers movie um, that's coming out in March that my company did, my production company shot it, I directed it, and I'm handling the post-production on it, is like that, the, the odds were stacked against us to even make that film because it was so ambitious. We had a 77-page script with uh, a budget of twenty thousand dollars, and set, and we shot it in seven days. Uh, and we had a cast of over sixty speaking roles, over fifty background extras, and then a crew of twenty to twenty-five people. Um, and anybody I've ever talked to in production, when I tell them that we shot it in seven days. They just, they're in astonishment. And the thing is, is we didn't sacrifice any of the quality or anything to make it in that short of time. So, I mean, that's the most recent one. Like when we wrapped on that film and then watching stuff play back uh, in the edit and going through the, the current cut of the film, it's... It's almost like I look at it. I'm like, there's no way I had anything to do with this film. Like, it's it's too, uh, it's too polished. It's too professional. Like, sometimes you don't, you got to look back at where you came from to realize you've grown in whatever your craft is. And yeah, so it's like that. That's that's the most recent one. Um, last year would have been buying the building. Um, we bought a 2,100 square foot. Uh, basically a shell. It had four walls and a ceiling. Yeah, see your YouTube that, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost done. I was just there today. They got about two more, I would say three more rooms to do the sheetrock on and we'll be almost ready for paint sometime this, this week coming up. So that's, I mean, like that is, uh, that's super exciting because I remember when I very first started uh, my journey. I, I bought this uh, Sony Vio laptop and uh, I had this little roll cart that <laughs> we'd roll into the living room at our at our old house and it like, that's where it started, you know? And um, yeah, it's just crazy to now buying a building and having a production van and shooting a feature film and, you know, it's just, it's crazy. That's, that's awesome. Um, I'm excited for you. And I just, I, I get excited because you inspire me. You know what I mean? And it just, it just, you know, solidifies that if you want it, you can have it. I think, I think the thing is for create, especially creative, like, we got to inspire each other because the rest of the world doubts people like us. Yeah. They, sure they do. don't, they think we live with our head in the clouds and you know, they're, they're just like, you know, that's not a real job until you do something like you really have to work extra hard to solidify yourself to the rest of the general public, you know, because <laughs> we're not doing, you know, like we're not doing a nine to five type thing. And I think, you know, so we really have to be the force to lift each other up because we're the only ones that get it, each other. You know what I mean? Like, it's not yeah. what, what I'm talking about is not crazy or what you want to do is not crazy. It's perfectly sane. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. there's there's only going to be that certain group of people that get that. So yeah. I think it's we really have to. Uh, find ways to lift each other up, empower us. Because, you know, even even the most positive people and the most upbeat people still have down days. I mean, like, it's don't, don't, people get that confused. Like, there's days where I'm just mentally exhausted. Like, some days beat me, you know, some days are just an L. And that's just what it yeah. is. Like, is being able to pick it back up the next day and and go forward. Yep. 
Yep, just don't let it sleep, you know, stay down. You know what I mean? You just you just get back up, and it's kind of like you got to rejuvenate, you know. And uh, yeah, absolutely, get the gas absolutely. in the car or get a tune up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, exactly. That's exactly. That's yeah. that's the that's that's all you could do because you know it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Because if you don't, no one else cares. Like it's oh. just like I think at the end of the day it's like you got to have that switch in your head like nope I got to do this for me like period like because no one else cares so it's just like no one's going to no one's going to take care of you like you you know what I mean so you you have to find that that energy to to keep it going even like when it's tough like I could tell you build renovating a building I was so far outside of my comfort zone and control zone and not knowing I don't know I didn't well at the time when I started I didn't know anything about construction I have a very intimate relationship with my building now there's nothing you can tell me uh or there's nothing I don't know about my building currently so it's it's like but that was a huge it was a huge growing um timeline for me because I was way outside like and there was I'm usually in a position like okay if something messes up I I, I usually I can troubleshoot fix it do whatever it, it I need to do to get things back on track but in the construction world I don't have any control in that you know between county permits and contractors like I, I gotta move at everybody else's pace and that is yeah. a, a really that's a very hard thing for uh, me to digest because like I'm the part of like oh if it's going to take too long I'm just going to go do it myself like you know yeah. I'm going to get it done yeah so and I only sleep four to five hours a day so it's like uh, I, I try to and I try to maximize those 19 to 20 hours that I'm up to be as uh, productive as possible so I like I'm always going see I like see it and it's awesome to hear that because I, I uh, that's how I I'm learning from other people as I meet more people. That's how creatives are, you know, and that usually we don't really have. We have to uplift each other because our people around us and our family members and stuff, they don't get it. And I and I was living that. And I was kind of like, why not, Why nobody interested in, you know what I mean? I'm like, did you see my, my show? And, and it's just like, you would, you would think that that would be your biggest supporters. And I remember I had a show with um, George Romero and he said, you know what, Brandy? He was broken down to me, you know? And he was like, they usually don't. And, you know, he just kind of how, kind of what you said about how creatives and how we, how our, how we think and, and we know, you know, and how usually the ones that are around us the most are family. They don't really, they don't really get it and we can't really ex- expect them to. But it's, it's, it's really cool though when you find people like you you know what I mean that get it and everything makes makes sense you know because I didn't know if it was I just was like too much time you know people ask me a lot especially at work when I tell them you know about my show and stuff I don't really talk about it too much because I I, I just to the point like if you don't see it you don't watch it I mean come on (laughs) you already know but it's like uh where do you find the time to do that and in my head I'm thinking like where wouldn't I find the time? I know the last past two weeks I was on vacation, so I went hard. I did a grip of, <laughs> I was yeah. good at it, you know, but I was having a good time. So in actuality, vacation, I had a great time because I was doing what I love to do. But it was like, yeah. where do you find the time to do that? And I'm thinking like, where do you find the time not to do what you love? So what do you do with it? To me, it's like this. When they ask you that, if you enjoy it. Yeah. But when they ask you that, the reason they're asking you that is because they see that as work and not something that, see, because they don't have the enjoyment or the passion about it that you do. So they're seeing it as like, it's almost like it's a job and they have, you know, it's just like a thing that they would have to do versus like, I, the next time someone says, like, oh, do you enjoy reading a book or do you, what do you do? Like, it's, it's equivalent. It's yeah. equivalent to that. Like, if you like to read novels on the weekend, think about that and then think about what I'm doing. Cause that's, that's what, I, this is what I like to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That always throws me off. I'm like, ew, that's mean if you're not doing what you love to do, you're not living. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So, you know, and, and my kids, you know, they do a thing every week with the teacher. She'll ask, because they'll go around the class and ask what they did on the weekend. And they'll be like, don't forget Miss Brandy. And I'll just be over there acting like I'm not, you know, I'm doing my thing. And I'm like, huh? 
you got to hold this little thing that goes around the group. You can't talk unless you're holding it. They're like, so, Ms. Brandy, what did you do this weekend? And I'll go, well, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, I did some nice interviews on my podcast. And, you know, they know I'm working on bullying. I said, you know, I worked on, you know, my bullying. And it's, it's to be honest with you, it's the same answer. It just gets a little better <laughs> each week. Yeah. That, that's what it is. And I always have this huge smile on my face like, yeah, that's what Ms. Brandy did. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I was talking to one of uh, one of my teammates. We were just uh, with the holidays. He went out of town, and I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "Yeah, holidays were great. We spent some time with the family. I knocked out uh, two client websites for them, and you know, I did this." I, and they're like, "Dude, it sounds like you worked the whole." No, I was like, "No, that's not work. That's what I'm. You know, like that's it's it's an outlet, man. I don't know how else to explain yeah. it. Like." It Very just, nice. it, it is what it is. And, you know, that's the other thing too that I've had to adjust in my thinking is that not everyone is going to run at the speed that I do or in the, the be at the same uh, production level, like as not, not in film production, but just like how productive I strategize my days out to be like, for me, I have to be able to say when I wake up tomorrow, I'm further than I was the day before. So yeah. like even if that's even if that's just moving everything an inch, as long as it's not as long as I don't have two days that are stagnant and nothing move forward. You know what I mean? Like that, that then I'm okay. But you know, because some days are gonna be more productive than others, but my goal is to have some type of productivity where we're moving the yards. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. That's me. I have to do something. I have to, or I just feel like even if I'm on vacation, if I feel like if I haven't done anything that furthered me along, even just by a little bit, I feel like my day, like, what did I do? I feel kind of gross. I don't know how to explain it, but like I just wasted away a whole day of my life that I can't get back. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a big thing. Like, and some people, some people are cool. They're they're cool with wasting that time. I'm just not <laughs> one of those people. Like, I gotta go out and like it goes back to, you know, these are the things that I feel it takes to get where I want to be. Like, I just want to be great, you know. So it's like I have to function at a great level to to do that or to ever if I ever have hopes of getting there for sure for sure it's, it's so cool because you know everything that you know you're saying you're talking about you know because when you want something you have to be willing you know to do the work and 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 you know have expectations of yourself and I think it's a good message also for for our youth you know because they get so either it's you know I'm working on this bullying um <clears throat> campaign right now and um I just like I'm trying to get to this place where I can pull greatness, you know what I mean, out of these kids yeah. that want to tear each other each other apart and, and teach them that you can be a person to, to build things, to build each other up, or you can be a person yeah. to tear down, you know? And it just plays a part in where you're going to be in life. Are you going to work hard to make people miserable? <laughs> right. I mean? Yeah, and like, I think, too, sometimes it's giving them that thing to like I, I think there a lot of the youth like so out of this film uh the e-lister something really really cool and unexpected happened out of it um the writer edward reed who's also uh the lead role um in the film uh he wrote in the film that there was like a, a musical play that happened within uh a high at, at a high school and uh, as soon as I read, I was like, dude, I don't know. I'm like, it gets really complicated red tape. Like when you start talking about uh, minors filming in, you know, school government property like that. I'm like, I, I don't know how we're going to do that. But uh, my AD, she's very heavily um, involved with her uh, PTO and you know, has a network of parents and teachers and she was actually able to get in touch with a drama teacher at a, at a high school on our side of town and it was during summer break so it kind of alleviated a lot of that red tape and we just had to make sure we got 
you know, parents' permission and all that stuff and the right paperwork done. But at the end of the day, they put this uh, phenomenal performance together. Um, and then I stayed in touch like with um, the drama teacher and everything. And I just, I saw the talent there and like, I'm like, these kids are here on their summer uh, vacation. They're coming into school and, you know, you kind of just see this spark in, in these young kids. And the, it's like, I want I want to I want to add fuel to that so like we worked this whole thing out so like this whole school year our school year starts in August here so on Thursdays of each week we started an after school program around filmmaking for um at that high school so so we've been basically uh we started with uh, we came up with some concepts we started writing the script and by the end of it they'll have uh, we'll have a short film by the end of the school year that they either acted in, produced, or you know did some part of the production piece. Um, and the, it's it's after school and it's two hours, and the, we have like a class of like twenty kids from freshmen to seniors that are you know dedicated to coming after school for two hours, at, you know, on a Thursday. And it's just, um, it all came from doing the e-listers. I wouldn't even met or cross paths with them otherwise. And That's awesome. it's, a, it's a huge thing. Like, I think it's great because for me, I'm super involved with the indie film community here in Atlanta. So for me, not just being a creator or a director or having a production company, like for me to have an active involvement in what that community looks like I think it's got to start like at the ground zero and yeah. if we're doing something where we're where we're showing it and uh, motivating kids from ground up like so, like the freshmen if they like the freshmen in this if they stick with it for four years they'll they could probably walk out and get a job out of high school with what we're doing you know what I mean like that yeah that's, that's, that's awesome. powerful to me yeah yeah, yeah, and that, it's so it's so cool because it's kind of like you you're already giving them a taste of what what it looks like, you know what I mean, to work at something, and, and they they're looking forward to now doing what they need to do and putting that foot forward at school because you just gave them uh, a taste of a look at what their future can be, you know what I mean, if they just work work hard, and I think that that's uh, pretty brilliant, and I I think like more people should we should I think a lot of schools should. Uh, you know push that more you know letting them well, see what it's going to taste there was a, like something like so that. like in in december there was a private school that reached out to me um in atlanta and i came they they actually this was their first year doing um putting filmmaking in their curriculum so they invited me out to come and talk to the kids and kind of just uh you know just go over some things like with the teachers and stuff and it was like it was so exciting just because I'm like oh my gosh I wish there would have been something like this like when I was in high school because yeah this is this is like I know for a fact if it was something that was like an option when you're going through your classes I would have took it you know what I mean yeah. so it, it seems to me that there are uh it's getting there but you know something like the the kids um that that um I work with every Thursday even talking with them it comes down to again it comes down to the the support at home when it comes yes. to like <laughs> parents just don't see there being a a career in it and it's i think it's and then to it you you can see how it affects um kids you know what i mean so it's just like yeah give, give it just being that that force that says you know I believe you can do it and it can happen I'm proof of it like yeah. I think it's enough you know what I'm saying like if if I can do it you can do it and yeah. it's just like sometimes everyone's got to find their support system it's just not always going to be the people you think is going to be your support system. exactly it, it amazes you just how you'll find out it's not and who and who it is so um, for sure and you know I was thinking it's crazy though we tell our kids you can do and you can be you know whatever you want and then <laughs> in the same instance oh that's ridiculous someone who does that or you know they come to you with something that that, that their heart is into and then you kind of you know 
shut them down. So yeah, I, I think personally as a parent, you know, I'm an eighties baby, but you know, my son is 12. I think some parents, we just got to spruce it up a little bit and get in, get into the, uh, we got to, you know, things have changed and, you know, we got to find out what kids like and then, you know, it's not going to be the same. They're not going to have the same goals or, or want to do the same dry stuff you probably did, you know, the nine to five, you know what I mean? It's yeah, gross. yeah. I feel like if my son isn't breaking any laws, he's not hurting anyone or himself, then go big and go hard. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an uphill battle for sure, but I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, I just got to know in my head that I'm doing my part to 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 better that uh, community and yeah. and push it forward in a positive way, and and I'm okay with that. You know, like obviously, you know, you ain't gonna change the world overnight, but I think as long as each of us that that have like a, a serious uh, investment in it that yeah. we we all do our part and you know it's just it's just one of those things that take time but I, I think I see I see the growth I see it and you know the the being involved with the high school kids and just knowing like just I, I think the ones that th- there's already some standout ones that I know are going to take it serious going out of high school and to me just being able to see that from ground zero and see where they go, I think that's just super exciting. While every shelter pet is unique, some love a good game of fetch and others would rather snuggle on the couch together. However, there's one thing that they all have in common. They're all pure love. Right now, millions of pets across shelters and rescues across the country are waiting to be adopted. Did you know that only 44% of dogs and 47% of cats in American homes come from animals, shelters, and rescue groups? The unique qualities of each and every shelter pet add up to an incredible bond between every shelter pet and parent. I love pets and I think they're just so giving and loving and just they just show you the best you know of what love is and this is all from an little animal they come in all sizes big small you know furry not furry but like I said love love if you're thinking about getting a pet this holiday season make sure to visit the shelterpetproject.org brought to you by the ad council maddie's fund and the humane society of united states please consider these animals need love and they need you and you need them thank you and voice to be reckoned with we support the animals and their safety and their love amazing I respect that like so much you know because I want to see that you know for 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 all our youth you know and in my end I'm just you know trying to you know make it a uh, safer you know someone I was talking to um I guess today um and we we're talking about she because she has a book for young kids on bullying and how bullying mm-hmm. you know is never really gonna go away because there's bullies that are adults you know there's all types of bullying but, you know, to at least try to make it a better, better place, put a dent in it. You know, I had, Scott Silverman always told me, you can't change the world, but we can sure put a dent in it. And I liked that, you know, because that's a big task. But if we, everybody did their part, you know, and so I'm just going hard, you know, with the stopping the pain, bullying, you know, advocacy. And, uh, you know, if we all, and you're doing your part and your part plays a big role in that because you could be just, you know, you sometimes, you know, you by you giving kids that outlet or that opportunity, you know, could, you know, could have turned out in a whole different way for them and became a part of, you know, could have, you know, any, it's just play, it can, you never know what you, what you've done for them, you know, they could have been dealing with something or be bullied or, or, you know, fall into the wrong crowd or you just never know, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
it is and I think um I, I think you're dead on with that and I, I think it's 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 one of those things too where you know it's it's there there's nothing it, it's it's that scenario where you know I, I am just giving my time and my my experience and what I know about the subject and you know kind of just running with it but at the end of the yeah. day it's not something I have no anticipation of uh, uh, of getting anything out of it like you know like right. in, like it's not something that those kids are are gonna have like it's something that they can't repay you know what I mean it's something that it's just you know me doing my part um, as a productive member of society this is what I know how to do this is where my contribution has to come in because this is all I know is media so I have to find ways to make that part of my story and my legacy and what I pass on you know what I mean like mm -hmm. that that's that's just what I do like I, I'm not good at you know uh anything else like if that makes sense like that's just like what yes. it's like I know how to tell a story I know how to build a team and I know how to get people together and I know how to uh tackle the impossible and make it possible you know like yeah. those are the those are my attributes that I have in life and showing other people how to do that is you know something you know uh, I'm an advocate of and I want to do it as much as possible anyone who listen I'll talk to them about it. <laughs> yeah for sure for sure and I think you're very important to um, to the youth too because you're sure you're showing them how to use media in a very uh, correct a very fun you know I mean artistic and a proper way you know because so many kids use media for <clears throat> countless of the wrong things you know to hurt others or sometimes they just don't even know I always tell kids like do you know what you have in front of you at your fingertips <laughs> right now yeah. you're just kind of you know just wasting away or, or just you know just snapchat I don't know what they do sometimes but I know that a lot of them like to hurt others or you know there's a lot of cyber bullying and so I think that's a very positive way to show kids to you know what I mean take and media and use it in, in the right way yeah, for sure. And I think, Brandy, you would be interested in the, the, the short that we're writing and going to be producing with the school because essentially it was, I, I wanted this to be their project. So I was just providing um, guidance and opinion as far as just like the efficient ways to do things. But I wanted the story to be something that um, they told and something that they came up with and you know the end product is something that is theirs that's not mine I was just a part of it but it's there right. they can own it at the end and basically it loosely they the, the concept is like a, a, a current day breakfast club type movie um, where we have kids in school suspension but they're from different what the current cliques are in this school and how they intertwine and it's been really interesting because there's like there's like a that. there's a huge um I think just the discussions like when we were uh talking about character development and breaking it down there's such a there's such a psychology uh, like a psychology breakdown in there of like what these kids are going through and experiencing because this is like honestly it's like probably one of the smartest ways you can talk to teenagers because they're not thinking of them opening up and sharing with you they're thinking well this is we're just writing a script we're just writing a story but they're putting so much out there because they're they're doing it from their perspective of yeah. what is going on in their day-to-day -day life and all of a sudden you're just like mind blown about like the things going on and the things that they're experiencing at their age and place in life and it's been a huge huge just wide uh eye-widening moment for myself and yeah it's 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 been really awesome but I think that their story and what their film will be will be something that definitely aligns a lot like with your, the the anti-bullying and all the stuff that that's going on because this really tackles it, the, a lot of the stuff talked about in there um 
it's not even so much bullying as just people being mean to one another. You know, yeah. I think there is a there there's 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 a line. I think there's a difference. Some people are just mean, and it doesn't necessarily like a, a bully. Like, give me your lunch money, and I make just this one person miserable. But some people are just mean, rude, yeah, <laughs> just nasty. Yeah, and, <laughs> yep. and that, that and a lot of that is flushed out in this script. So I will definitely make sure to like once we once we have a, a, a final product and and everything. Um, love to send it over to you and see, you know, get your thoughts on it too. You know, just because you you have such a uh, investment into that type of um, advocacy. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I, w- I would love to love to to see what you guys have because, um, yeah, I just any way that I could, like you said, not looking for any thing out out of it. I just want to be able to do my part, but but I do want to see change you know what I mean I want to see kids uh and it's not just about you know ridding of the the bully it's like the the behavior yeah but I want to see that person that bullies I want to see them succeed too and be seen in a whole nother light I don't want them to be looked at as the bully yeah it's people to look at you for something better yeah it's really Mm -hmm. about them those those transforming as well um so I think there's a problem there, there there's a healing for both people yeah you know because there's definitely something that's triggering this person to be mean or bully you know what i mean so you know it's not always yeah Mm -hmm. yeah they're probably being bullied too yeah yeah they're getting bullied at home probably and i've heard so many different stories and you know i've met so many different type of kids that come from some type of trauma and then this is the behavior that they actually you know they show and so for me it helps me understand them more and and handle them gently you know I don't you know you know go about talking about it you know because those aren't my you know me I'm not in that position to be able to do that I have to have boundaries because I'm not you know I just right 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 work work there (laughs) you know what I mean but it helps deal with them better and to you know what I mean when they're around me you know I know to look for definitely but to also just show them you know uh that I'm not just a this person here to try to tell you what to do or how to do it. I'm, I'm here because I care. You know, being here and listening to to Michael, it's pretty awesome. It just means the world to me to to get to know somebody and their way across. You know, in a whole nother state and to feel a connection and a bond and similarities and to share that with each other I think is what the world really is about what it should be about and I think this is a good example of people coming together to share in in a common love for something and I just want this to spread all over you know biggest things we can do whether it's with our own kids or with uh kids we uh have a possible influence or just involved with them at any level i think is like the one of the the biggest things that we can do as adults and mentors is just be there be available show up like it, it's not rocket science like sometimes just showing up and being there to support somebody you don't even have to say anything but just presence of being there yeah. goes such a, a long way and that's and that's not just with youth that's just with anybody like yeah. if you it doesn't it, it doesn't take having to have like this huge uh philosophical mindset and ha- knowing to say all the right things at the right time it has nothing to do with that it's just show up and be present in the people's lives that you care about whether that's the youth or you know family or friends whatever i think it simple things like that go so much further than what people want to give them credit for because people yeah. always, i don't know how to do that i don't know how to, just be there, be there. Have, that's yeah. all you got to do is just be there that's all you got to do yeah 
So true, so true. I know some people think they gotta like have uh, this one friend who's gotta fix everything. I gotta feel like I don't, that's not always necessary. You can't fix me or you can't, but just you don't have to even say anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's, 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 it's this thing over the past couple years that I've, and this is way left field, but it, it puts you, when you're in a position of where you need to be someone be there for somebody but there's nothing you can say like like if someone has a loved one that passed away like there's not going to be a magical phrase you're going to be able to mm-hmm. spit out and, no. and make that person better their grief is just their thing that they got to do and grief is just something for the most part that we do alone but what what i've learned over um the years is instead of trying to say the perfect thing or come up with the it's more like, hey, listen, I know there's not any words that are, are going to make you feel better, but if you need to someone to get you, help take you out, get your mind off of things, or just talk or whatever, like, I'm here for you. And, and, and that's just kind of where I started leaving it, because yeah. I always used to build it up to where, oh, man, I don't know what to say to him. It's such an, you know, it's like, it's walking on eggshells. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to yeah. do. And, you know, it's just like a, a tough scenario, but I kind of just removed the whole, hey, I'm just going to be here. Like, you, you tell me where you need me involved and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you need me bring you some food or whatever. But I think it, it's been so much more effective than trying to, to, yeah. to be the fixer or the solver or, you know, because in some situations, you just time is the only thing that's going to heal certain things. Yeah, must for sure. Yeah, and that person's might used to he- hearing everybody else say those those things that you're trying. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it makes it so, and you know, it can, it can be frustrating, you know. And uh, you know, like my sister and her husband passed away, and you know, and I just, you know, what I mean, didn't want to overwhelm, and I just just wanted, you know, just to be just there, like, hey, whatever it is, you know, like, yeah, you, know, you need me to go around and go slap some people. That was just being funny, you know, <laughs> go slap some. People. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me know. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> It's what, you know, and I I think those things, you know, resonate so much easier with someone going through a a tough time versus trying to, you know, make attempts at solving something you can't solve. Yeah. It's not for you to solve, you know what I mean? But, you know, I think that's, you know, even though people have the, the right intentions behind it, it's like realizing that, hey, we as individuals don't have the ability to fix everything. Sometimes just showing up and just being there it is all we need to do. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, you know, hopefully, we, you know, somebody listens to our show here and, you know, we can help somebody. Uh, I know we've talked about a, a few things, and but either way it goes, it may sit and register with somebody. You just never know. No, I think, I, and I, I definitely encourage, uh, it, it, I, even if it's one person, just one person. I mean, that, that, that's a job well done. Um, just to, you know, it, it could inspire somebody to do whatever it is that they've been waiting to do, you know? I, I mean, that's, that's the great thing about the, the current state of technology is like, you're in San Diego, I'm in Atlanta. We have a mutual uh connected and it's just like now here we are having like these deep dive conversations that 10 years ago i don't even know you know it it would be i don't even know if it would be possible to uh connect with people the way we're able to now you know what i mean right yeah exactly yes 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 i'm so i'm so honored still to be able this is your this is your time and you have shared it with me and you've been so open about a plethora of things you know and you're you're you have so much to be excited about you know about your you know premiere and everything and i'm just like stoked yeah you can't tell because you can't see me right now (laughs) no i got you no i yeah (laughs) it's 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 and i think that's i I love like when i get to have conversations with people that it is just like oh like you're 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 my spirit animal like three thousand miles away because you just align like with the same vision and are, are instantly like on the same page and i think like 
in the the only thing separating people is like all uh, you know the, the distance and i think that's it's always I, I love having these kind of conversations so it's definitely been uh a treat just to uh talk with someone three thousand miles away that's like hey i'm over here you know uh beating my own drum doing you know with you know on the same page as you uh way over on the east coast you know so that's it's just incredible yeah, uh, it's a beautiful thing to, it is it is um mm -hmm. so yeah that that's I, i'm super excited just about everything going on and um the e-listers is you know we'll have our premiere in um march uh so beginning of march and then it'll be available on amazon after we do our premiere so i'm excited just for people to see uh what's possible that <laughs> like it's the epitome of uh against all odds is really what that movie is is just how much went into it it just it shouldn't have been possible it shouldn't have been possible and wow. we, we, and, we, and we did it yes and it sounds like you worked so hard and, and you you deserve it and um i just once again uh, i'm so happy for you i'm happy to share the moment you know this time with you you know and uh being able to share it with everybody and you're always welcome back here to on my show to uh to share you know to update to share more you know what i mean and to talk about you know just about it this is a voice to be reckoned with and i found that from where I was in the beginning, what I started with, how where I wanted my show to go to where it is now. I, I've, I have a better understanding of what my show is for and what it's about. And um, it's a voice to be reckoned with and a voice of many. That's like my little tagline, a voice for many or a voice of many. And uh, this is a home for you. I got to ask you, so what was it when you came up, when that was the name, what was, what was the goal of it at that time? And then fast forward to today, um, what changed and what is the, just give me the difference of, I don't mean to flip the interview on you, but no, it's I'm just okay. interested. <laughs> no, like, cause the, 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 I, I like, um, I think it's catchy and I think it, it, it's like, Oh, let me, let me see what this is about. So just knowing that, you know, you've had it going on for uh, a, a year or so. And, you know, there's definitely things you figure out and growth there. It's just, I, I, I'm always interested to hear someone's story as how they got to where they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And, and not a problem. Um, well, in the beginning, you know, I had a whole different name. I think it was, it's where it's at. And I just like put it out there because I was like, okay, this is to my head. I was like, it's where it's at. Like, if you want to hear it, hear about whatever you it's come here. This is my show. It's where it's at. <laughs> right, know? right, right. And then I just started, you know, with, with the things I wanted to talk about, you know, like worldly stuff, things that people can identify. But it was, it was so many different things. I have a, I used to tell people I have a lot to say, a lot to talk about. I'm versatile. You know, there's so much, much stuff going on inside this head here. You know, that I spoke about telecom, the whale, the sea world. And, and you know what I mean? I'd, I'd go through the bullying. I'd go to so many different things, you know what I mean? With so many different type. I didn't have a, a type of person or, or guest that I, at first I didn't even start with guests. I was like, I don't know how, how that even works. I just did everything. And then I started to, you know, reel in some, you know, some people to share, to share with. And then as I went forward it kind of still squished a little bit and it was like okay I just was like I need a new name I need to reinvent I was like hmm I said well I like to talk <laughs> and talk to other people I said okay a voice you know but I feel like I'm so passionate about everything I do and, and everything I, I put I put out it comes from a place you know within me and then I was like a voice you know uh and through you know the times and everything that's going on right now in our society from the you know, which I'm not really into politics or anything like that, but from just the, the, the malarkey and the bull crap and, and everything with, you know, with our youth, it was just like more of like me wanting to, my voice to be powerful and to be heard, you know, and if, if I was speaking for, you know, someone else, because it wasn't just about my voice, a voice to be reckoned with, I was speaking for the person that is too shy to speak or doesn't feel they have the courage or doesn't feel like they're not being heard, then okay, don't worry about it, I got you. I'll do, I'll do it for you, 
you know, and trust me, they'll hear me, you know, and so I came about, okay, a voice to be reckoned with, because you're going to know, <laughs> you, you know, what I mean, it's not like, even in that much of an aggressive way, like, like a hostile or anything like that, you know, it's just more of me just bringing that empowerment into, in, in my voice and, and the things that I say, and what I talk about, and how I say it, and, um, then you know it turned into like me doing a lot of interviews and, and speaking with others and then it was like okay now you know and like I told you I said your voice you know this is for you too your platform a voice for many and then you know celebrities were, were coming on and and just different types of people I did shows with like a friend of mine that has a nonprofit, and then I did a show with my son actually a few times you know and so it's like a voice, you know, I mean, to be reckoned with. It didn't have to be about something that was just like, uh, that had to do with uh, maybe, you know, just that one particular thing. Like, you know, someone came on, they wanted, to, like, you're talking about, you know, what, what you, you're talking about, but it's your voice and you're, you're sharing it because you want people to hear and know what's going on with you, you know? Yeah. And so it was like, a, you know, so that's when I realized being more of, it didn't have to just target like a, a one certain you know, I mean, type of genre or whatever, whatever it is I'm trying to say here. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, yeah, like you didn't have to target like a certain demographic. It was yeah. broad enough. And I, I, I think that's, I think that's really, um, I think that's really unique, and I think it's really clever, just because a lot of times there, there could be certain topics that you know they may not be a big enough topic where it's like a. Uh, you know, you dedicate like a, uh, an ongoing uh, podcast around one topic. But I think, you know, something like what you have going on is great because you're you're powering other people's voices and then yeah. adding yours to it. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's I think that's great. You know, I think yeah. that's a really good um, that's a really good way to 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 tackle you because you can tackle everything from social issues to pop culture to whatever and exactly mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a it's a very smart platform i think yeah because i feel like i want this to be a place where i feel like if i made you laugh cry and maybe pissed you off a little bit to get mad enough about something to care about something then i've done my job <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, as a storyteller, uh, you know, at the end of the day, director, editor, whatever, producer, you know, at the end of the day, I just consider myself a storyteller. And what, I, you know, what I want my stories to do is provoke emotion, whether that's mm -hmm. laughter, sadness, anger. Um, a lot of my work, like the E-Listers is actually uh, the first comedy um, that I've tackled, in addition to it being my, my first film or first full length feature film like I've done shorts and I've done done uh, a ton of music videos ton of different uh shorts and and stuff like that and episodic so it it was it was a whole different lane because a lot of the material and I don't know why I guess uh up to this point I, I most of my stuff has been on the darker side um and I think it's because it was just an outlet like for a very long time like I had this uh, anxiety of just death um, just the idea of death even though it's like the one thing everyone in this life will go through at some point it was just like this overbearing anxiety like I didn't want to like I couldn't go to funerals I couldn't uh, it's I, I just avoided the topic at any means and then I guess like after my my when my grandmother passed when she was 96 and this was like maybe like right about five years ago and I just decided I'm going to just tackle this and the way I did it was through writing and creating characters so we have a I have a series Morty that's on Amazon and it's about a mortician who talks to the dead and uh, there's an episode where he deals with a, a suicide victim. There's one where uh, deals with uh, an overdose. And, you know, it's just like it's it, it lets me play it out in, in, on screen uh, through actors and then crafting the story in the edit. And it's like it's meant to provoke people to talk about things that they're not 
normally comfortable or you know not the biggest trend to have you know like that you're out with your friends so it's just like that was that was my outlet and not that I'm a thousand percent cured but it's definitely um it was definitely therapeutic just to like we shot that series in funeral homes in embalming rooms with dead bodies under blankets around us so like oh wow yeah like you walk in and you smell the formaldehyde like it was a very like i essentially just took my greatest fears and just went head on and stood there and we shot it and worked with i I had to work with actors and my crew and it was intense but yeah it was intense interesting and we have one more episode that's coming out um that'll be out on amazon uh soon i don't have an exact date because the e-listers have taken complete uh priority um but we do have there's three episodes out there now and we have one more um that we're releasing awesome awesome well i'm stoked i'm i'm definitely gonna check out um is it marty yeah, it's called Morty. Um, it's it's on Amazon. It's on YouTube. I mean, it's on all the, the different platforms. Um, but it is like, it does have like a longer runtime. So it's not really like, I think the third episode is like 45 minutes. So it's not like something you want. Like, I always tell people Amazon because it's just like, oh, I could just watch that from my living room and not necessarily from a computer or uh but if 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 youtube is your way to go it's it's available on youtube as well so it, it's, okay. it's out there yeah for sure for sure that's awesome well, well thank you so much for spending time with me here today oh yeah i had a blast i love the conversation and uh, i will definitely um love to come back on and do an update whenever i got one available Yes, yes, for sure, most definitely. But can can you please do me the honor and my listeners the honor of letting them know again one more time where they can find anything they need that um, the work that you've done and when the, uh, the premiere of the listeners it will be showing. Yes, uh, my home base for everything related to anything I ever do is just m3creative.net. Uh, links to all my social media, everything from every project I've ever done, everything is right there on my website. And we are looking forward to releasing the e-listers uh, the first week of March of this year. So that's coming up really soon. So uh, super excited and we release, I don't know exactly when your episode comes out. Well, depending upon what day that falls, Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So I believe that's 6 a.m. Your guys' time. Uh, The trailer, the world premiere will be out of the trailer, which I'm super excited about because we get to see a variety of the characters that the film uh, highlights. And uh, I'm just excited for people to see it and get some feedback on it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So it's Monday, right? For you said 9 a.m. Eastern, your time, right? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, then uh, I'm going to pretend like rewind, like you asked me that question again. It's going to be out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Got to. Yeah. So, you know, whenever someone listens to it, just go to, and you can also, for the e listers, it's e listersmovie.com. We'll have all of the from merchandise to cast interviews to behind the scenes pictures to uh, we do have like a seven minute sneak peek of one scene that we released earlier maybe about six months ago um so if that is something people would love to check out the great thing that's awesome about that is that it's a seven and a half minute scene and it's one continuous shot um big shout out to Ben Beeler who is my DP and cinematographer he went through seven and a half minutes of carrying a steady cam (laughs) carrying it through this scene that covers about 40 extras that all have different lines within it so uh it's it's unique in itself so I definitely encourage people to check that out as well for sure for sure 
Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm definitely going to be, um, actually, I have a page. Um, I'll be able to give you more of that information later. I'm getting better at the social media thing and putting stuff on my page, and actually remembering how to get there <laughs> and tell people. So, yeah, I'll be sharing, you know, on, on my page, too, and on my website when it's finished, you know. So people can, uh, our listeners on the side can know what's going on and and be ready for everything. I call it everything Mike Mueller. I just see, I just branded you. That's a whole new everything Mike Mueller. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Hey, if I put it on a shirt, you know, I'll definitely make sure to get you the credit. I, I might put that on a shirt. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much. And um, it was such a great time having you here. I had such a good time. I feel like I made a new best friend. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm glad. We'll, we'll definitely be in touch. And, you know, I definitely want to hear more about your your journey and your story as it progresses. Like I said, we got to support each other and lift each other up. So definitely, sure. if there's anything, um, uh, just, hey, two cents or you know you need two cents on something just let me know I'm, I'm always glad to uh lend an ear thank you so much and and same here if anything you know uh just you know where i'm at well you don't know where i'm at but you can find me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i got it. i got i got your i got your phone number i got your email that's all <laughs> oh it's so funny Buzz driving is drunk driving. And if you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Did you know over 10,000 people lost their lives due to impaired driving fatalities in 2017? Enjoy a night out and find yourself oversharing or taking too many selfies. If the answer is yes, then you're noticing your buzz warning signs. Buzz warning signs include Overtexting, taking too many selfies, oversharing, chugging water to sober up, turning the music down to focus, chewing gum, popping mints, eating snacks to soak up the alcohol, drinking coffee to sober up, splashing water on your face, doing jump jacks. Wow. I mean, all these things to do to sober up to drive, but hey, how about you just don't try? <laughs> When you spot your buzz warning sign, call a cab, car, or friend when it's time to go home. Just don't drive home. A message brought to you by NHTSA, NHTSA, and the Ad Council. Thank you. And voice to be reckoned with, we support the no drinking and driving, senseless, careless, and just wrong. And this this guy, <laughs> this guy right here, Michael, Michael Mueller, he loves what he does. And it comes from a, a very good, honest place. And I think the world is a lucky place, a better place because of people like Michael Mueller. And so I, I truly believe in him, his vision. And uh, I'm happy to, to be able to share this this moment and any other moment I get to, to share but I find this to be history right here. And uh, yeah, thanks, Mike.